Raise your hand if your penmanship has gone down the drain over the years. Now, despite the fact that I went to a Catholic school through sixth grade, and cursive was on the agenda every day, uh, because of smartphones and the typing and all that, it's pretty much gone by the wayside. So the question is, how many times have you sat down, made a beautiful card, only to ruin it with your writing? And I'm not trying to be mean or anything, because I'm talking about myself here as well. And as you can see in front of me, I put together the bell card from Dreaming Tree, 3dsvg.com, and then that happened. So instead of this, what if you could do this? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to up your card game by using single line fonts, a Cricut compatible pen, and a Cricut Maker or Cricut Explorer. Let's go. So before we get started here, it's important that I point out that pretty much I'd say 99% of the cards that you find on our site feature a blank panel. Okay, like for example, this one here, you can see this purple panel. The bell card that I'm gonna be customizing has a white panel. You can obviously make that whatever color you want. Now, taking it a step further, I just wanna show you that it doesn't have to be a rectangle. You can write on any shape. Okay, so this is kind of a rounded rectangle with some of these little sun rays at the top. Um, this, this card here has this element. Obviously, we're not gonna customize that, but this heart down here, that is your canvas. You can write on that. Going further here, this card, which I think we actually put a seed packet in. Uh, yep, we did. Um, this is a print-a-cut, but you can also write on this little area, this, this rounded rectangle. And here's another one. You open it up, you've got yourself a canvas. And one more. This is a beautiful little freebie, actually, on the site and there is your canvas. You can write on that. Single line fonts are a little bit different than your standard font. When you use a standard font, you're gonna end up with bubble letters. A single line font was specifically designed to look like handwriting. Now I'm pretty sure that Design Space has some options as far as single line fonts go. I personally like this website. It's called Single Line Fonts. We'll include a link to the site below the video. Uh, it will be an affiliate link, so if you make a purchase, Using the link, we will get a small commission, but you can see here that we have single line fonts available here, and I believe she has a couple dozen available. Today, in this video, I'm gonna be working with one of these two, either casual script or a font off of her site called Graceful. So you'll browse the site, pick one, purchase it, and download it. Once you have it downloaded, it's gonna look like this. On a Mac, it's gonna look like this. On a PC, it's gonna look very similar. Now to install this font, because we do need to install it in order to be able to use it in Design Space, installing a font is this simple. We're gonna double click on it. Now this may be in your downloads folder. I moved mine to the desktop. After you download yours on a Mac, probably on a PC as well, it'll be in your downloads folder. You locate the TTF file, double click on it, and as you can see here, on a Mac, you have the option to install the font. And then it only takes a few seconds. Okay, and you can see that it pops up here. Now I don't have a PC in front of me, but if you hop on YouTube and do a search for installing fonts on Windows, I'm sure there's a hundred videos that'll walk you through that process. So now that the font is installed, we'll need to open up our design space. If you had design space open while installing the font, it may not show up. You may have to quit and exit out of Design Space and reopen it for it to pop up. So keep that in mind if you're not seeing the font that you installed. Now, as I mentioned, in this video, we're going to actually customize this card. When you download a file from Dreaming Tree, uh, I'll show you exactly what you get here. This is roughly what you get after you unzip it. We'll double click on it to open it. You have a folder that contains all of the SVG files. There's a JPEG that shows you what you purchased. And then you also have a menu file. So let's open that up and take a look at what that contains. Okay, the menu file basically shows you what you have, gives you dimensions, um, also shows you a supply list. And what we're interested in here is scrolling down and looking for that panel. Let's assume that you already have the card completed and you're looking for the panel that you want to write on. In this case, it's called panel underscore white dot SVG. You can clearly see that it's the only square piece, which is different than the actual card base, which you can see here. 
Okay, so panel underscore white is what we're looking for. So let's open up our design space and start a new project. And we're gonna click upload and upload image. I'm gonna browse to the location of the card right here is on my desktop, the Bell greeting card. Yours might be in a different place. It might be in your downloads folder or a folder that you put it in. And we're gonna go into the SVG folder and find panel underscore white and then hit open. Okay, there it is. It automatically sets it as a cut image, which is perfect. We'll hit upload, click on it here to select it and add it to our canvas. So there it is. And what we're gonna do next is select the text tool and that will automatically put the word text on there for us. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I did on uh, this piece that I've already cut out, okay? So I'm gonna write the same sentiment there and let's get that going here. So right now it's super big. Obviously you wanna take this and shrink this down so that it fits onto this panel. Now keep in mind this panel, when you download it and upload it from our site, comes in at the correct size automatically. You can see it's 4.8 inches wide, 6.75 inches tall. So now the font that is automatically selected here is Cricut Sans. We don't want that. We wanna actually use the new font that we installed. So with it selected, let me deselect it so you can see here. As soon as we select it, we have some font options here. So we're gonna click here, and then we're gonna select System. And this font has SLF at the beginning for single line font. And I'm gonna select, let's just do the casual script. Okay, and then we can X that out, and there it is. So you can see now we have the single line font. And what I'm gonna do is just increase it or decrease it depending on how much you have written, uh, how big you want it, how small you want it. That's completely up to you. And also keep in mind that you may want to play around with the formatting. Uh, you may wanna add a space, remove a space, have maybe you wanna put the letter A on the next line instead of up here. That's completely uh, an, you know, an artistic decision that you're gonna be making. Uh, but I think that looks great. Now, one other thing too that you can do just to make sure that everything is nice and centered is draw a box around both the panel and the font. And then you can go up here and click align and you wanna center horizontally, okay? And that really didn't do much because it's pretty much centered. But if we center it completely, you'll see that not only does it center it left and right, but it centers it top and bottom as well. So that's just a helpful little tip to make sure that everything is nice and centered. Okay, obviously you wanna double check your spelling. So the next thing we need to do is we need to tell Design Space that, well, we're not cutting this, we're gonna write this. So we need to click and select the font or the type, and under Operation here, we need to select Pen under Draw. Okay, so it makes it a little bolder. I think that's just what it does. It's not necessarily going to draw it more bold. That all is dependent on what type of pen you're using. And the next thing we need to do is do a select all and we need to attach it. Now, I've done this before and I've hit attach. Let's see what happens when we hit make it. And I'm bringing this up in case this happens to you and it may happen. Okay, so that's what we end up with, which is incorrect. Let's cancel that. And we're going to detach this. And we're gonna select just the type. And here under advanced, we're going to select ungroup two letters. So if you go to make it and you see a bunch of garbage basically, you wanna ungroup it, select the type, go to advanced, and you wanna click ungroup to letters. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna separate this font into individual strokes, which is fine. And now we can do a select all and attach. And you'll notice now when we go to make it, it is correct and it looks great and it's ready to go. So now I do have some Cricut compatible pens here, uh, but there are also others on the market. Uh, this one is from Craft World. We'll make sure to include a link. And honestly, it looks pretty much identical. Uh, and I'm gonna use this one here. I'm gonna insert it into my machine and we're gonna do a write or a draw and then a cut. And we'll look at the final result. So in Design Space, you wanna select your material. I'm gonna select medium cardstock. That's my go-to. I always set the pressure for more for the cutting, just in case. And you can see here that 
it's asking for a pen, which we're gonna load. And this should work on a Cricut Explore as well. But on the Cricut, here you see you have a little port here for your pen. You just pop it in until you hear it click, lock it in place, and you're gonna load your paper just as you would to do a cut. But in this case, it's also gonna do the drawing or the writing. It's gonna do the writing first, and then it's gonna do the cutting. Okay, so let's, let's watch it in action. So this is what you're gonna end up with, okay? And take a look at the difference. Now that looks professional, and unfortunately, my handwriting needs some work, but hey, we have a solution, and there it is. So that's gonna do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to us on YouTube. I'll see you at the next one. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos, and also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.